Hey everyone, this is going to be a short session today, but I have a question for you. Do you speak French? Parce que j'ai étudié le français à l'université de Hontel, je vis en Paris aussi. Tu puedo hablar español? Porque yo estudiar español en la Universidad de Nebrija en España solamente un mes, pero mucha gente persona en Nueva York de mi país de Estados Unidos habla en español, entonces puedo hablar un poquito de español. I'm sure some of you follow, right? But my next question is, on Google, on Google, turn on on Google. Nanan Hangugo. Nanan Hangugo Rul, Chokum Handa. Hangugo so ship yun. O ship yun. Mulaya. It nida. Nanan usum de hakyo kusa nimi nida. Okay, so you've just heard Spanish, French, and a little chok chokum hangugo. So I have a question for you. If I was from China, you would call me Chinese, correct? If I was from France, you or you would say I'm Parisian, right? Or France, uh, French descent, or call me French. If I was Spanish, uh, if I was from South America, you would call me South American. And if I was from Spain, you would call me either Spanish or Spaniard, right? And so for those who understand uh, the rules of the English Romanist language or the English language, we have what's called a suffix. A suffix that is at the end of a word. So you have I-N, E-S-E-I-N-A-N, uh, e right? So given that rule or given the suffix I-A-N or A-N or E-S-E, -E, right? If I'm from China, I would be called Chinese. If I'm from Brazil, I haven't been to Brazil yet, would love to go. I would be called Brazilian. And of course, if I was from Korea, even though I lived there back and forth, uh, what the kata, right? Going back and forth for over 10 years, I would be called Korean. But I'm not Brazilian because I wasn't born in Brazil. I don't have Brazilian parents. I'm not Korean. I wasn't born in Korea. I do not have Korean parents. I'm not Chinese. I was not born in China or even born in America from Chinese parents. My question then is, why do people keep calling themselves Christian, Christ, and then I-A-N, Christian, but not born of Christ? Help me understand. Because scripture says, and yes, I'm going to actually pick up my Bible, Christian, a Christian is a person who's born of water and spirit, right? Born of God. John 1. Just, just, just read John 1. Okay, in the beginning was the word. But just read the, the, the verses below that. We're going to read the verse John 1 and 12. It says, yet to all those, yet to all who did receive him, receive him who? Christ. To those he, who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God, to be called children of God, depending on your version of your Bible, to be called those that are born of God, right? 13, children born of not natural descent, a bloodline, right? Not from your father's decision, not from your mother's decision, not from anyone's decision, not even your decision, which is born of flesh, which is not just born of flesh, born of will. Right, whereas people say, I'm giving my life to the Lord because they've read this book and they believe in the principles associated with it. There are individuals that I've met who belong to other faiths in other countries who read the Bible because they're good principles, which is what I've been told by these individuals. But it doesn't make them a Christian. I just had a conversation with someone where most of the things that they were saying, where truth is a truth is relative. And this man who is pretending to be a woman, that's what he's pretending to do because he feels like one. You know, he is God's child too. He may have been made in God's image, 
But it is clear that anyone who denies God's creation is not God's child. We need to stop saying that because when you say, yes, God loves you. Yes, God has a plan for your life. To people who are denying the basic biological makeup of who God created them to be, you're actually giving them comfort in their delusion. And we need to, oh, excuse me, not we. You need to stop doing that. Right. And when we look at, OK, we're going to go to John three and five. When it look, when we look at the fact that it says Jesus saying, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born again, born of water and spirit in order to be called a Christian. You need to be born of water and spirit. I don't understand why this is being complicated. No, no I I'm sorry. I do understand why it's being complicated. It's because there are wheat and tears, right? There's tears in buildings that have crosses in them. There are people, according to scriptures, who is of the devil, who are attempting to deceive people and who have deceived people into believing that they are Christians by the words that are being used to, to, to make you feel comfortable in your state of, again, delusion. Because you cannot have unforgiveness, for example, and call yourself a Christian. God says that if you do not forgive others, he does not forgive you. So how can you have yourself, how can you proclaim that you're a Christian, but yet and who received forgiveness for your sins, for your wickedness, for your evil deeds, and yet you can't forgive someone else who does not know Jesus, or someone else who does but claim to be a Christian. Conversation after conversation I'm having with people. And I'm like, no, that's not what the Bible says. And if the Bible doesn't say it, you cannot tell me the spirit. I'm not going to say the Holy Spirit. The spirit that you have that is telling you it's okay to hate people because of the color of their skin or to hate people because of what has happened in the past or even hate people for what is happening now, that that is the Holy Spirit telling you to hate people. That is not the Holy Spirit. That is not the, the, the spirit of God who is love. And I've said this on previous broadcasts before that you cannot say you love God and not love the person who's sitting to your left or right. And it doesn't say love only Christians. It says God is love. God so loved the world, right? You want to proclaim that scripture, even those who are not saved can repeat John 3, 16. God so loved the world. God loved you and me, individuals who did things that were antithetical to how he created us to live. But unless you are born again, again, please read John 1 and 3, John 1 and John 3, so you can understand that you must be born again. There are people who have read scripture and said, okay, it makes logical sense that God is real and that Jesus Christ is Lord, or Jesus Christ came, who is God, in flesh, and died and was resurrected. But they had a mental ascent. They used logic. And because they used their own logic, their darkened thinking, they believe that they're Christians. There is no Holy Spirit. There's no fruit of the Holy Spirit because people keep saying, oh, yes, yes, they lie, cheat, kill, murder, cheat on their spouses, beat their spouses, lie to the government, lie to people regularly. They're just growing in their faith. They're just, you know, they're new Christian. There are people who were smoking crack and when they encountered Jesus Christ and received him, they stopped smoking crack. There are people, okay, wait, some of you didn't grow up in the Bronx the way I did, right? I grew up in the 80s, in the Bronx where the crack and cocaine and all of that epidemic was not just in the Bronx, but throughout different parts of democratically ran cities, right? Yes, crack is in all, all states in the United States. But come on, everybody. Everybody knows the South Bronx, right? So during that time, there were individuals who gave that, submitted to Jesus Christ. There were gangbangers who had an encounter with Jesus Christ. There were liars who had encounters with Jesus Christ. 
but because I want to keep with the scriptures, right? Paul, Apostle Paul used to kill people. He used to kill people in the name of God, right? And he had an encounter with Jesus Christ and he stopped killing people. So why is it that people in church can say that they are Christians and yet they can't stop killing people with their mouth and stop gossiping and slandering people? Help me, help, please. Write in the comment section. Can you, can someone explain to me why everyone, not everyone, let me, let me start with the hyperbole. Why, why a lot of people keep calling themselves or people who are in church buildings continue to say that you're Christian, but yet your life doesn't look like it. The things you say doesn't look like it. There are people who do not call themselves Christians, but proclaim to have a good life because if you look at their life, they don't lie a lot. They don't cheat on their taxes a lot or every year. They don't, they don't do these things that we call, again, Christians call sin. What is sin? Sin is breaking God's law. So if you are in Christ, then, or proclaim to be in Christ, then we can talk about sin. If you're not in Christ, I'm not talking to you about sin. Why? Because you would need to know or have God's law. We can get into the, the theology of it all or the text of it all and says, you know, those who reject Jesus Christ and say there's no God, they don't have an excuse because the way God made us all, and we'll get into that at a different time. But I'm talking to those, again, who proclaim to be Christ and literally have put hits, H-I-T-S, hits, on people with their mind in their mouth, wishing people dead. We, we cannot do this. Where it says, let, let's go to 1 John 3. It says, anyone born of God refuses to practice sin. You refuse to practice sin. And you know what practicing sin means? You practice becoming excellent at it. You're a good liar. You gossip and lie. And you do it with ease. And so a lot of people want to talk about what's called those, those huge sins. You know, homosexuality, adultery, fornication. Not even fornication anymore. Because there are people who call themselves Christians fornicating, right? Okay, we're going to talk about gossiping and lying. You do it and you don't even think it's, you think it's okay. How about using, how about deception? You say you want to have a conversation with someone and you start with, oh, that's a nice blouse. Oh, and how are you? But the intent of the conversation is to number one, get information about them so you can gossip about it later, right? Or talk about something else that you want to bring up. That's not about how they're doing or that they have a nice shirt, or their hair looks nice, which is all, by the way, passing away. Your, your physical body is passing away. But what you're doing, it's called manipulation. And manipulation is witchcraft. So 1 John 3, 9, anyone, born, anyone of God refuses, born of God, it doesn't say anyone who proclaims to know God, or anyone proclaims to know Christ. It says anyone born of God refuses to practice sin. Because God's seed abides in them. Yes? Read, please, press pause. Get your Bible so you can read 1 John 3 and 9. He cannot go on sinning because he's born of God. Meaning, you cannot physically go on sinning. When it says physically, let me be clear. Can you sin? Yes, the Bible says if you sin. It doesn't say when you sin. It says if you sin, right? And your physical body can do things that your body could. Well, let, let me be clear. When I submitted to Jesus Christ, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I couldn't dance anymore. I've danced on at Carnegie Hall, people, believe it or not. I danced at Carnegie Hall. I was the one in the clubs dancing until six o'clock in the morning and sometimes seven, depending on when the lights came on. But when I became born again, I literally lost all coordination. And I realized everything that I was praying, God, anything and everything that's in me, anything that I do say, think that does not please you, God, please take it away, 
stop it, all of those prayers. But God says, you stop. But that one, I, I have my, I have my uh, groove back. I, can, I, I have my rhythm back. It doesn't look like it, but I do. Okay, verse 10. By this, the children of God are distinguished from the children of the devil. It says, when you do not practice sin, because you're born of God, it says we distinguish, we can tell the difference between children of God and children of the devil. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. And nor is anyone who does not what? Love their brother, people. We need to stop calling people Christians. We, not, we need to stop confirming or rather lying to people and saying, yes, you're a Christian. When you were born in a home where your parents might have been Christian, but that doesn't make you a Christian. If you have two parents who are Chinese, it makes you Chinese. If you have two parents who are Korean, it makes you a Korean. But if you have two parents who hopefully, when they said they're Christian, are Christian, then their desire for you is to not be born of them or have that knowledge only, actually. Their desire for you is to be born of God so you can indeed be a Christian, a Christ follower, a lover of God. Everyone, please, we must ensure that, is when, that when we meet people who are in the world, we present the gospel of the kingdom of God to them. But if we meet people, when we walk through those church doors on Wednesdays or Mondays or depending on where you go, the 24-hour house of prayer and the things that they say, because most people are not going to come into church smelling like alcohol. Most people aren't going to come into a church building saying, yes, this is um, the woman I'm cheating on, my help, cheating on my wife with, or I'm a man and this is my boyfriend. Most, most churches, most people won't come in doing that. But most people will come in lying and cheating and gossiping that people do not seem to want to preach about. People, we have to make sure that we are proclaiming God's truth to everyone we meet, starting with ourselves first. Thank you for joining me today on For His Glory Lifestyle. Until next time, see you then.